The adventure of Terror Monster continues. Hello and welcome everyone to another Terra Monster tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a virtual box. This is going to be the first episode out of a series of episodes, how to do important things with your Terra Monster NAS. The first thing we're going to be doing is to set it up so we can actually use the virtual machines to create something. So the first thing you're going to do, you need to open your app center. Make sure that you go and find VirtualBox. Make sure you install VirtualBox. When you have installed VirtualBox, um, it will be here. You just click it and you just follow the on-screen instructions and set a password. I have already done this, so I cannot do it again. But it's fairly simple. Just set a password and that's it. Once you have installed it and you set a password, we're going to be adding a um, folder where you can download ISOs and put so you can actually boot something up. And later down the road in these tutorial sections, we're actually going to teach you how to do network booting. So you no longer need to have USBs and you no longer need to have the uh, ISOs in order to boot something. Uh, it's very useful if you have, for example, a Proxmox node or something like that. You can boot directly off the network. Uh, but, yep, yeah, so we're going to make a folder here. And you see, I have a folder here for ISOs. And over here you see that we have Windows 11 and Ubuntu already here. We're going to be showing where to download these ISOs uh, later, so don't worry about it. All right. So, if you're going to be downloading the ISO for Ubuntu, all you need to do is go to the Google and type Ubuntu, and uh, you will come to the Ubuntu page. Click on Ubuntu, click on Server, click on Download Server File, and click on download Ubuntu server and just click on if you want the long time support or if you want the short time version. I'm going with the long time support. All right, let's go into uh, virtual box. As you can see, um, we are now inside of VirtualBox. As you can see, I already have a Ubuntu playground already here, but we will be creating a new one. So. Just click on create a new one, name, today we're going to be Ubuntu, um, we can actually let it be like that, so just put Ubuntu, we'll find Ubuntu, 64 bits, Linux, make sure that it's selected, input the RAM, uh, we're going to have 40. 96 which is 4 gigs by the way uh, if you're unsure about how much RAM to put there um, you can just do it uh, for example if you want to have 4 times 1024 and you will get it next I'll create a hard drive we're going to create a hard drive you can select whichever you want. Uh, for example, if you're going to be moving this virtual machine to Proxmox, you might want to select QCO. Um, if you want to move it to another one, you, for example, Windows, you might want to have VHD and something like that. So basically select the one in case you want to move it. Yeah? I'm not going to be moving this one, so VirtualBox is perfectly fine. And dynamically allocated. How much do we want? Well, I'm going to be putting it at 30 gigs because I just want to have 30 gigs. Wait for it to finish off. Once you have uh, created your device, you're going, it's going to be look something like this. We are going to have to click on settings or right click it and click on settings, depending on what you, what you do. Um, we need to actually add a few things. So just go through the settings, make sure that everything is added. For example, if you want to have encryption, you put it right there. System, for example, floppy drive, for example. We, we, we're not going to use any floppy drive, so you, you're not going to need that. Uh, we're going to use optical and hard drive, though. Uh, processor, how much you want. An acceleration. Display. Remote display. And over here. We have the hard drive and we're going to add the ISO file yeah? because we need to boot it. So if you look right here, you see we created the ISO folder. It shows up right here. So click Ubuntu right there. And 
basically just go through this, make sure that you fix everything. Do you want it to have networking? What kind of networking you want? In this case, I'm just going to use uh, a bridged adapter. So, and I'm just going to put it on ETH81 because it's the secondary network. And we're just going to put it, and then we just click OK. After that, we can uh, basically start it up. So just click Start. Now, you're going to need a remote um, interface in order, because if you look over here at the console, you're going to be seeing that we can't do much over here, for example. You see, we can't do anything here. So what you're going to need is a remote desktop. So in this case, um, I don't have the Flash plugin because it's not safe. So what I am going to do is I'm going to actually save this uh, remote desktop um, uh, link and I'm going to open it in Thin Client. Thin Client is basically a program that you can download and you can use whatever you want really, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to use Thin Client. So I'm just going to click here and it will see download started and it will download the link to my computer. And after that, I can open it and it will show up the rest of the menu. So I'll see you right there to this one here. And basically, as you can see, uh, we're now opening the Ubuntu. And this is basically the remote thing that I am using. You can use whatever you want. No VNC, you can use whatever you wish. But Thin Client for me works perfectly, so I'm using it. And then we'll just wait through the setup process here. And here you go. Now it's starting up. So now we're just going to type in what language you want. In this case, we're going to go with English. And after that, uh, if you want to update to the new installer or not, I'm going to update. It's going to be downloading the new update. Just needed to wait for it to refresh. There you go. And after that, we're going to identify the keyboard because I don't have a US keyboard, so we're going to be identifying it. If you have a US keyboard, you can skip this one, but I don't. Uh, so basically, uh, yes, we have a uh, yes, we have a oh, and no, we don't have a star, and it will be detected as Swedish because yes, I have a Swedish keyboard, so yes, and then we do done. After that, it basically tells you what you want to install. In this case, we're going to be installing Ubuntu Server, so we can just click Next. Next, it's going to be checking the network. Uh, we just wait for it to check, and once it's done, there you go, it's checked the network, and then after that, we're going to go to Next. And we don't need a proxy. It's basically going to check the mirrors, so just wait for it to be done. There you go, all done. And we're going to go to next. In this case here, we're going to select which hard drive we're going to use. We're going to use the one, and I'm going to set up some LVMs and things. So I just need to go on done because this is all good. And this is all good. You can check it over if you want, but basically, it's just going to tell you that the boot drive is there and where to mount it and whatever system it has made. For example, it has made a LVM volume and things like that. It's perfectly fine. Just click done. Do you want to format the drive? Yes, we want to format the drive. Enter your name. In this case, we're going to go with Terra Monster. The server name, Terra Monster Ubuntu. Why not? Pick a username, Terra Monster. Why not? Pick a password. Well, you can choose whatever password you want. After that, do you want to install uh, Ubuntu Pro? No, I do not want to. I'm going to skip it. Do you want to install OpenSSH? Well, I actually do remember. I actually think that you should, but it depends on the safety. Um, if you don't want it, then don't do it. But I'm going to do it because I want to SSH into this one later on. So let's do it. And over here, what do we want to have installed? Well, we want to have Docker installed because we're actually going to be needing that one. So we're going to put that one in there. And that's basically it. We don't need anything else here. There we go. Now it's going through the motions. Uh, 
And we just need to wait for it to finish. Um, I'm going to be speeding through this one later in the video editing, just so you know. Alright, so we can see that it has finally installed everything and run all the security updates. We are going to be rebooting the system. If you get this message failing to unmount the CD-ROM, it's because VirtualBox actually automatically demounts the CD-ROM uh, once it's been used, so you don't need to worry about it. Once we have logged into the system, you will be greeted be with the <laughs> basic things as always. It's gonna keep booting for a while, so don't worry about it, I'm, I was just too fast. But we can still do a few things in the meantime, so let's do... Let's do an update. You should always be doing a sudo update and upgrade out once you have installed because there's always something. And there is better commands for doing this, by the way. I'm just doing it to make sure that you follow what I'm doing. And then we just wait for everything to update. Right, everyone. <coughs> Welcome back. And now we have updated everything. And now we're going to be testing and see if everything is working as it should. So let's uh, see if Docker is up. There you go, Docker is apparently working. And after that, let's uh, try and do something to see if it's properly running as it should. So, let's do this. <coughs> We're going to be installing um, Super Mario Infinite um, onto Docker and see if it's just working. If it's working, then we'll just go to the next one. And I hope you like these tutorials, by the way. Uh, we're we're going to be making a lot of them, um, more useful ones, for example. This is just to test and see if it's actually working. <coughs> there we go. It's actually running, so let's figure it out. Let's open a web browser and check. And as you can see, it is working. So let's try it out. Well, there you go. It's working. Well, that's enough. Well, there you go. As you can see, uh, Docker is clearly working as it should. And um, well, there you go. As you can see, uh, Docker is clearly working as it should. And um, we can now go on to the next tutorials. Basically, we're going to be setting up a different variation of things. We're going to be setting up pie holes. We're going to be setting up um, duplicati. Um, we're going to be setting up uh, network booting, for example. You, you know you have usually had your USB sticks and you usually have your ISOs when you're trying to install virtual machines or computers or something in your network. We're going to be setting up so on your Terramaster NAS you can actually boot from the Terramaster NAS into your systems. So for example if you have a new computer and you don't have Windows on it you can just go in there, type the IP and it will automatically boot uh, and you can choose what to install, Windows or whatever you want. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to do that with the Terra Master NAS as well. But there you go. That's all for today. And as usual, see you next time. Hope you enjoy the tutorials.